Hey everybody, it's Dr. Kara, professional animal communicator, and this is one of my mini animal communication lessons. And this one, it holds the key to unlock everything for you. I have seen magic happen when people understand what I'm gonna share with you in this video. I've identified five unique types of animal communicators, and I want to work with you so that you can understand which type of animal communicator you are so that you can start using your strengths, making it easy, and then you can build from there. But find your most natural, easiest way to communicate with animals and then the doors will open and it's really, really incredible. And I've seen it happen over and over and over again. So let's go into each one of the five types of animal communicators and hopefully you'll recognize yourself in one of those. If not, I've got some tips for you at the end of the video. The first type of animal communicator is the listener. This is an auditory person who really hears words using their inner listening. So this is the way that most people think of animal communication as I'm going to talk to an animal as if I'm talking to a person out loud with words. I'll hear words back and that's way, the way it's going to happen. Unfortunately, there's um, five types of animal communicators, so that means only about 20% of the population actually uses their hearing as their primary sense when they're communicating intuitively with animals. So if you are a listener, you will naturally hear things. You will um, most easily hear words. You might even hear accents. You might hear phrases. You might hear songs. Um, you could hear literally anything that comes through your intuitive sense, your inner ear when you're talking to animals. So if you're a very auditory person, you want to hear things you learn best by saying things out loud or hearing other people talk about them. You're probably a listener and your strength is going to be found by really paying attention to that inner ear, that inner listening. The second type of animal communicator is the seer. And the seer is somebody who's very visually oriented and they will actually get images on the, the screen of their inner eye that will convey intuitive information from animals to them. So if you're a seer, you probably already know that you're very visual. You can picture um, a phrase that you saw in a book. You know which page, you know where on the page it was, or you're very visual um, in the creative arts or that sort of thing. Um, I'm a seer. I can guide you down any street, but I can't tell you the street names. <laughs> I can picture it in my mind's eye, but I can't. Um, you know, give you the di exact directions. So um, as a seer, I really rely on the images that come to my inner eye. I don't always hear words or sounds, but I my easiest way to get information is from that inner vision. So if you're also a very visual person, then, um, and you're frustrated with communication with animals, I would suggest really focusing on that inner vision. Close your eyes, ask a question, see if any images pop up for you, because you might be a seer. The third type of animal communicator is the sensor, and this is somebody who feels things physically in their body. So it might be um, a pain in the stomach, it might be a tightness, it might be um, uh, a feeling of puffiness in your foot or anything like that. Anything that is a physical sense that you feel in your body that is not yours, but it shows up when you're communicating intuitively with an animal, then you're a sensor. Sensors tend to be um, empathetic people. They tend to be empaths. They tend to feel other people's feelings. If somebody else is in physical pain, they might mirror that pain. And it can be a little bit hard to live with, but it's a great strength as an animal communicator. But if you are a sensor and you're very sensitive, very aware of what's going on in your body, 
and you're trying animal communication and you're hoping to hear words, that's not the easiest way for you to get the information. And especially when we're starting out, it can be so hard to focus in on the relevant information coming to us. So if you're a sensor, try paying attention to your body after you ask an animal a question and see if you're getting um, information through the senses in your physical body. We all have all of our senses are available to us as our regular what I call outer senses and our intuitive or inner senses. So start paying attention to what's going on in your body as you're communicating with animals. The fourth kind of animal communicator is the feeler and this is very similar to the sensor but the feelers feel the emotions of the situation or the emotions of the animal. So they are also often empaths. They often um, will feel other people's emotions. These are the people who will walk into a room and get a stomach ache because something feels wrong or they'll feel the tension in the air or um, they can get really swayed by the energy and the emotions of the people around them and the crowd. And it can be hard to differentiate what's yours and what's somebody else's. So that's um, kind of one way to know if you might be a feeler. And again, feelers, if they're trying to hear the words, they're going to be frustrated with animal communication because their natural way to get information is through their emotions. Those emotions will lead you to the information. So my recommendation is if you think you're a feeler, start to get really good at recognizing your emotions and then leaning into them, seeing where they take you, see what other information is there just beyond the feeling. But the feeling is most likely going to come first for you. The fifth kind of animal communicator is the knower. This is what is known as claircognizance in psychic worlds, in psychic communities. The knower just knows stuff and they can't tell you why. They didn't hear it. They didn't feel it in their bodies. You know, they didn't have any sense about it or a vision, but they just know what they know. And it, it often comes with a real certainty. The challenge comes when they have to explain it to somebody else, because when you're a knower, there's no explaining, you just know. And so this, I think, can be one of the most challenging types of animal communicators, because you really do have to take kind of a bigger leap of faith and just trust what you get, even if you can't explain it through one of your senses. So I believe that every animal lover is an animal communicator. I believe that we are all hardwired to communicate intuitively with animals and that we all have the ability. Some of us have lost touch with that ability. Some of us have to practice. I'm one of those people for sure. I had to practice for a long time before I was able to become a professional animal communicator. And we need to kind of come home and relearn who we are and what this hardware is that we're born with. Um, and sometimes we have to undo some of our software programming, our, our limiting beliefs and the, the cultural beliefs around is this possible, is it not possible, and the doubt and all of that. But I believe that inside each one of us is an animal communicator. We all have this ability. We can all develop this. And the reason I wanted to share with you today these different um, types of animal communicators is because I've seen so many beginning animal communicators get stuck. They get stuck because they expect animal communication to look a certain way. And mostly they expect it to sound a certain way. They expect to hear words. But, you know, these five types are evenly distributed throughout our human population. And so if you are a feeler or a sensor and you're trying to hear, you're not playing to your strengths. You may hear stuff sometimes, but it may not be the easiest way for you to get information from an animal. And so you may be making it harder for yourself. So I want everybody to realize what their animal communicator type is and and start there and build from that. Start with the easiest way and then add in the other senses. It's all valid, it's all good. And um, 
And I think it just makes the journey that much easier when we understand that there's not one way to be an animal communicator, but we can all be animal communicators in our own ways. So I want you to discover which type of animal communicator you are. If you haven't recognized yourself in one of these five types, and I should say that we all have all of these five types within us. It's just that one is dominant, one is our easiest way, one is like pushing our easy button. It just shows up automatically whether we're trying or not. So we all can use all of these senses, but we're naturally gonna be um, predominantly one type of animal communicator. If you haven't recognized your animal communicator type yet, come on over to karagubbins.com slash quiz and take my short quiz and it will show you exactly how you are designed to communicate with animals. So let's talk about that a little bit more because I really believe that when you know what type you are, it, it's opening doors and magic is going to show up for you. So Paula says, knowing that I am a seer helps me relax. After I took the quiz, it was completely clear that I am a seer. Although all the avenues of communication are available to everyone, knowing that I am a seer helps me relax into my most comfortable way of tuning in. So she's very visual and she gets images and those images may be movies, they may be cartoons, they may be photographs, um, they could be blurry, they could be hazy, they could be crystal clear, but she starts there and then she can get more information and it just allows the whole process to be more relaxed, more comfortable, more available and more accessible for her. Um, Catherine says that I found after doing the test that I'm a feeler. I always felt things when communicating with animals, but many times ignored it, thinking it was just me. After reading the guide, I now understand and I'm more aware of my ability. The guide has helped me to communicate with an animal without blocks or doubts and everything seems to flow easier. I will not dismiss other ways animals have communicated, but I will focus more on my feelings now. Thank you, Kara. So, um, if you take the quiz on my website, you get a 19 page guidebook to help you understand and practice using your natural strength, your natural gift, um, enhancing your animal communicator type. And that's the guide that Catherine was referring to there. So she's a feeler and she learned how to use that as a strength instead of ignoring it. And right there, boom, the door is open, right? So I want everybody who's struggling to see things maybe from a different perspective and try looking at it in a different way and maybe the same thing will happen for you. Um, Deanna says, I think at some point in the past, I, w I realized about my style, that my style was claircognizant, which is the knower, but your guide really cinched it for me. When I've taken animal communication classes in the past, I was very frustrated and blocked with the communication because I was focusing on receiving images or voices, etc. As far as I can recall, I don't think I was in classes with anyone who was claircognizant and I wondered why I rarely saw or heard things that could be confirmed. Your guide brought up traits of a knower in a way that I hadn't registered before. So thank you very much for the guide. And that's from Deanna. So again, it's so common because it's kind of foreign territory and we don't realize that information can be coming to us through all of our intuitive senses. So we oftentimes overlook the easiest stuff that's there for us, the easiest way for us to get the information. The information's already there, we're just not recognizing it. And I want you to recognize it. I want you to be an animal communicator. Um, Jenny says, once I found my strength, everything flowed. I think the most profound thing about knowing how I get my intuitive information is being able to relax and stop comparing. For the longest time, I thought I was doing it wrong because I thought my information was supposed to come in a particular way. Of course, that particular way wasn't my main strength. And once I found my strength, everything flowed. So thank you, Jenny. That's exactly what I'm talking about. 
we are um, our worst enemies and we can put up blocks that we don't have to. And of course we do it without even knowing it. But that's why I've developed this quiz and that's why I want people to be more aware that there are these five types of animal communicators and you're naturally gonna fall into one of those categories and it really could be the piece of information, the key that unlocks the door for you to communicating with animals. Um, Mickey says, at first I thought it was a mistake, but wow, the quiz was right on. She says, when I got the results of the little quiz, I thought there must be a mistake, but it didn't take long for me to realize that, realize that this is my life in general. This is me overall. I am a feeler. I feel things deeply. Often I've thought too deeply. Now I see how my base is feeling and all other animal communication stems from that. I don't know how those few questions in the quiz figured that out about me, but wow, it was right on. So happy to have this insight. So that really changed things and gave Mickey a lot of confidence in how her intuition worked, how her intuition spoke to her, and how she could most easily and most meaningfully connect with animals. So I want the world to be covered in animal communicators. I want an animal communicator on every continent, in every country, in every county, every city, every state, every town, every family. I want an animal communicator at every veterinarian's office, at every horse arena, at every um, rescue center, at every shelter, at every animal sanctuary. There are amazing people using animal communication to help animals all over the planet in all of these ways. And I think of each one of them as a little point of light and that we are all connected on the planet. So my vision is to do everything that I can to share my information and what I've learned from my 10 years as a professional animal communicator teaching hundreds of people how to communicate with animals their way so that we together can become a million animal communicators. And considering how many people are on the planet, that's not that many, that's a small percentage, but it would be significant. It could significantly change the lives of millions and millions of animals around the world and millions and millions of people. This is such a powerful, impactful profession or skill to have, even if you don't wanna be a professional. So I want to share everything I can in these animal communication mini lessons to help you open the door to your natural ability to communicate with animals and come join me as one of the million animal communicators on our planet. So um, if you haven't identified your animal communicator type yet, come on over and discover who you are, how you're wired, what you're capable of. Um, you can take the quiz at carrotgubbins.com slash quiz. And um, when you do, you will get your animal communicator type and also a 19 page guidebook that walks you through all the challenges and strengths of your particular type, things to watch out for, things to be aware of and ways to strengthen your natural ability that you already have and we'll build from there. So come on over and check that out.